Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Leader Talks. Today, we're going to talk about women in the military because Veterans Day is just right around the corner. But before we get started, let me tell you who we are. My name is Vanessa Montañez with my two co-hosts, my two comadres, Chantal Camarillo <laughs> and Rosario Lawrence. We've been best of friends for a long time, and all three of us are in the mortgage lending industry. And we really wanted to do something different as a cause of the pandemic. So we wanted to bring awareness and have an open forum for women and others to empower each other, to motivate each other, to enrich ourselves and educate ourselves. So we're here to talk today about women in the military, and we have a very mm -hmm. special guest. But before we get started, what's awesome about Veterans Day, it actually started out of World War I. So when the Treaty of Versailles was signed, 11 months earlier, I mean, a few months earlier, they signed the, uh, another act, and it was done on the 11th hour of the 11th day on the 11th month in Germany, and the Allies, they signed an armistice to, to end all wars. So that's how we got Veterans Day, and since then, in November 1919, President Wilson signed an act that said we would have Armistice Day, Veterans Day, November 11th, mm -hmm. every November 11th, starting at 11 a.m. So with the official launch of parades and a lot of things are all at 11 a.m. So I thought that was amazing. Mm -hmm. But today, <laughs> I really want to go ahead and um, introduce a really dear friend of mine, <laughs> Major Jamie Cook, who I know personally now for four years. <laughs> and how we got connected was because we're both in a doctorate degree program. But what I find most amazing about uh, Major Cook is her accomplishments, <laughs> her humility, her humbleness, and her drive to help others. Now, I'm going to give you a quick little bio <laughs> of who is Jamie. Um, beyond that, she's an amazing uh, mother, sister, <laughs> friend, niece. She's just awesome. So she is 44 years of age, 44 years young, <laughs> been 24 years in the military, and this has been her career. Uh, she is from South Carolina, and she started her career as in the military, in the Army, as a wheel vehicle mechanic, which I had no idea. <laughs> so I know that she's really mechanically inclined. She can take it to the um, <laughs> she got started, but then she moved up the ranks and she got mm -hmm. different, she became a squad leader, a platoon sergeant, section, uh, section uh, sergeant, mm -hmm. and she's deployed several times to Iraq. Um, so from there she went to the Army, now she went to the National Guard. Mm -hmm. She's currently assigned, um, her current role is the Assistant Project Director for the Army STARS Project. Mm -hmm. And that's really working with the university, with the, several mm -hmm. universities, such as Harvard University, Michigan University, dealing with risk factors of the military, of the army. So she is, that's her day job. <laughs> also a therapist. She has her own <laughs> private practice. Fantastic. Her and her husband have a foundation <laughs> and a scholarship for also students in need. So mm -hmm. I find that just her philanthropy, she continues to give back to her community in Trinidad and Tobago, in the Virgin Islands, where she's also from. Mm -hmm. um, she has multiple degrees from a criminal justice background to a bachelor's in social work, a master's in cl clinical um, social work, and now currently mm -hmm. she's a student completing her <laughs> doctorate uh, soon. She's a student mm -hmm. graduate. Yeah. <laughs> but not mm -hmm. only that, she's also right. won many medals. Um, she has a bronze <laughs> star medal. Uh, she has uh, Army C Commendation Medal. She has like maybe 10 medals that are <laughs> just amazing. She's been happily married for 23 years and she recently just has two little ones that came to her family and we are so blessed and humbled <laughs> for her continuous gift of loving, teaching others, and empowering others. So she is a true leader in my book, in our <laughs> book. So we want to go ahead and say thank you for your service. Major thank you. Book. Thank you <laughs> for being amazing and being my friend. So with oh, that, uh, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Chantal to ask the first question to me. <laughs> you are just giggling. 
Yeah, because I it's always weird when people talk about me. I was like, oh my gosh. I, <laughs> wow. I, I, I just must say, Major Cook, I am beyond impressed where you find the time, but it's it's <laughs> actually just in awe. Really, you're an inspiration. So I just want to say again, first and foremost, thank you again for your service. Oh, and you. <laughs> with that, just women in the military, right? Females mm -hmm. are currently act actively serving in the military. Um, and that makes up about 16% of the United States Armed Forces. Mm -hmm. And that's been an increase since the 1980s. So that's actually, yes. uh, you know, just impressive, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, secondly, according to the Pew Research, um, the percentage of female officers have steadily increased from the 1970, where it was at about 5%. We're now looking at commission officers at about 18%. So that's that's as of 2017. Yeah. So with that, tell us about your experience taking all of that into the fold and how you you know stepped yeah. into the military shoes in this service. Mm, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'll try to package it as quick as possible. So no I think yeah, I think for me, um, probably especially growing up in rural South Carolina, I think one of the best opportunities I had in, in terms of getting a taste of the military was in ROTC in high school. Uh, my family was absolutely against military service. I had an uncle that died in Vietnam and that was like the family thing. We just wasn't going to do that. So, and I, but I've always been a very defiant child. So <laughs> um, I knew I was going to do it just because of that reason, but I did have a little experience in ROTC in high school. Um, so I think that planted a little foundation and seed for me. Um, and then you know, just trying to get away, you know, I didn't grow, I didn't have a perfect childhood or background. So really the military for me was an avenue out of where I was coming from. Um, and it just was a perfect fit because it allowed me to grow into um, being like what I thought I wanted to be for the world uh, with, with some, you know, some navigating from some very good leaders uh, in my career um, because they had to teach me some things that I didn't have, like the skills that I really didn't have to be a good leader at the time. So I was very fortunate to have those leaders in my, throughout my um, career. Um, so yeah, so I joined, as she said, as a, a young mechanic. Um, I was very fortunate. I did grow up in an area where maintenance and farming was like the foundation of our family and our community. So I was very good at being a mechanic. My husband will tell you I was better, better than he was. I was actually a very good mechanic. So my goal really was to become the first female uh, on the, uh, you know, in the, in the army, we have like our enlisted side and our officer side. I was, my goal was to be the first female command sergeant major of the maintenance school, right? I was, I was really tracking to do that. But I think somehow along the way, I always remember that um, I always was just so much more concerned with not just who my soldiers were coming to work. Like I wanted to know so much more about them, like as an individual and their families. And so just wanting to be more involved in part of their life and growing. Um, I found my way through social work because I didn't even know the army had social workers. <laughs> and so when I was in um, Ashley Fairbanks, Alaska, when I was stationed there and right after 9-11, um, you know, I decided to commission to become an officer. So I ended up going to the University of Alaska. I had some great professors up there, ROTC program there and that is when I realized the Army had social work as a profession. And I didn't even go into it. Then I went to become a, uh, what we call a health administrator first. So I did a lot of health operations, you know, managing, you know, uh, med Army medicine, basically, in the field environment, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then also in the hospital. So, you know, that's kind of like where my career has moved. But I think my career has been very unique and interesting um, because I have always also try not to stovepipe myself. You know, I try to always um, be very adaptive <laughs> in uh, jobs and opportunities. And I pride myself on people not knowing what my career specific background is, because um, I like to see what they think, like, you know, what they think my profession is within the military before, like, I really tell them what I do. Um, and for me, that is just more of understanding that they could can utilize me in almost any you know, facet of service. So, cause I can plug and play almost anywhere, but yeah. Um, so what was the question? What does it mean to me to serve? Or <laughs> uh, My experience have been very unique. I served, you know, a while. Um, then we were in Afghanistan. I think at that time 
Um, I think my husband and I both work, you know, both in, um, he retires actually tomorrow, his last official day in the military. So wow. he retires tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I think we were honestly uh, burnt out, was very tired at the time, um, got, you know, going back to back to combat and, you know, training. Um, that's how we decided to make the transition and go from active army to the guard. But then we went to active guard. So it didn't really make a difference, but you know, that's, we thought it was, but that's how I made the transition. And it was the best transition because the experiences I've had serving in the guard gave me the other part of what I always wanted to be, which was always a community um, advocate. And the guard is all about community and you are integrated in the community and how you do business. So it's probably where I was best fitted for anyway. <laughs> So I ended up where I needed to be in, in terms of that. So yeah, just a lot of jobs, a lot of experiences. So I've been very good, you know, happy about my career. Not all the time the experiences are positive, but um, they all are learning opportunities. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes, you. Yep. Yeah, that's so yeah. very true. You know, you talk about, you know, the ups and downs of a career or, you know, the journey we go through. And I always believe even when we're, you know, it's not always the best we're learning and I still consider that winning. So I know you're an inspiration to many. So Major Cook, in the last 24 <laughs> years in the military, active through guard and then active guard, <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, where do you see the impact you have made mm -hmm. as a leader, paving the way for the future woman in the mm -hmm. military, in the future military leaders? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so, and Vanessa, she's probably going to kill me. So I actually got promoted a couple of months ago to Lieutenant Colonel. And uh, so the lady, <laughs> the lady who promoted me is uh, General Farris, and she just got promoted to two-star general, which is phenomenal in itself just to make general. And to be a medical service corps officer and get promoted to that level is amazing. But I say all that to say when she got promoted, she said, you have to see her to, to be her, right? You have to be able to see that it's a possibility um, to be able to think you can achieve it in the first place, whether you want it or not. And I think for me, um, this, this, this question was, you know, rolling in my head over the last couple of weeks. But today, a young lady sent me this text that for me sums up what it means to me. And she, I served with her in like 2011-12. And she said, good day, ma'am. Um, just thought of you and wanted to tell you thank you for everything and just being an inspirational leader. You are appreciated. So for me, that that's enough because it's the seed I want to plant in all of our female le female leaders, leaders in general, soldiers in general, but I am, I am very passionate about developing our, our, our women in the services, um, that they have the ability to do everything that they desire to do. And if there is something that they want to do and it's not available, then we'll figure out how to, you know, how to open those doors as well too. But um, just looking back, I always appreciate that people that I've served with, especially female soldiers know that I am an avenue that they can reach out to for whatever reason, even if it's just to thank me. And I'm like, wow, I mean, I mean, her work together, but we wasn't like, we didn't work together daily, but for some reason, whatever our interaction was, it was hopefully inspirational enough for her to remember. And I hope it has, you know, guided her a little bit throughout her career. So that's, that's what's more important to me. <laughs> okay, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel, congratulations. <laughs> you should have put that on your bio. I know, I rarely update those things, you know. <laughs> I usually up there and somebody asks me and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I shouldn't be so nonchalant about it, but, um, you know. <laughs> Wait, but for the benefit of our viewers, please tell them what you are writing on for your dissertation because it also oh. women. Yeah, so my focus on my dissertation is women executive leaders in the military and the aspects of emotional intelligence and adaptability. So that's what I seek to explore and, and hopefully learn some, you know, pause some things out of that. See, you know, how those leaders, those women leaders are able to extend to those levels and what are those skills that they feel are relevant, you know, to allow them to be, you know, adaptable and, and be able to navigate multiple things that I'm learning as Vanessa shared, especially being a new mom. <laughs> So I think I am walking the walk now of what I want to explore and study. So I think I had to go through this experience for that, that same reason. 
I really feel that that's how you're going to be paving the way with all your studies and all the good work that you do to Rosario's question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. So, uh, also, what would you recommend for women who are interested in the career of the military and what steps to take? Oh, yeah, I think, I think know that we are, the military as a whole is very diverse in terms of our branches and the different jobs that we have. You know, my baby sister's Air Force, so, you know, we have that Army Air Force kind of <laughs> back and forth in our family, and we have, you know, members that are in the Marines and Navy in our family as well. So I think just know that the military offers so much unique experiences and different services within themselves offer different experiences and have their own unique culture. And to get started, you know, just be courageous enough to go into the recruiting office and then talk to other people who have served and, you know, walk up to people. My, the lady um, and her family that does our like landscaping, our projects around the house, you know, her daughter was interested in joining and, and we're actually getting her connected now. She's going to go into Air Force because of what she likes to do. I think she's a better fit in terms of the career field because the Air Force offers it than the Army to offer. And I would love to bring in the Army, but, you know, I don't want to, you know, spite my sister services. So, you know, we're trying to get her connected in the Air Force. So just ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, go to the recruiter, um, talk to people who served, and then don't be afraid to make the decision, you know, sometimes, you know, um, we look at what's going on or what's kind of put out there about what's going on in the services. And, you know, all too well, you know, we have our own challenges. We do have our own challenges, you know, with our, our young sister, unfortunately, who life was lost at Fort Hood, Texas. You know, that's, that's a loss, that's a huge loss. And I can't imagine as a family, you know, knowing that you gave your daughter to the military and then to lose, you know, your child. Um, but I would say those are not the totality of joining the military service. You know, we have equal amount of people or more who have had a wonderful experience. Don't be afraid. Know that there's great leaders out there that will take care of you, will protect you. And it's been a, it's been a wonderful career for me. Um, and just tell them be courageous and just go seek some answers and <laughs> talk to other people and, you know, decide if it's something that, you know, they want to do for themselves. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so with that, um, we wanted to, you know, just ask as well, um, what does um, lead her mean to you? Mm, your cook? Yeah. <laughs> you know, lead her to me, because I read you guys thing, right? Network, empower, enrich, educate grow development. And I think the key for it also for me was across all industries, because I think anytime you have something that has inclusivity, right? Inclusiveness, because women may be in different sectors, we may have different experiences, but we all are women and we are serving in those industries. And there's something that you could absolutely learn from different industries and organizations. I wish they did this a lot more because um, you know, you, you, you get stole pipe in the military. We get very like this because that's the organization that we're growing up in. But then the question is, what are we, what are we not learning? Like, what are we not learning as individuals or as um, an organization to grow? So for me, lead her is exactly kind of what General Farris said, right? You have to see her to be able to think you can even be her, right? And so what you ladies are doing is amazing because you're doing something that you know, you'd be surprised like what people think, like, hey, I wanted to do that. I didn't think I could do it, right? And then to see you ladies doing it and, you know, giving someone the courage and opportunity to do it. So, and, and again, you're bringing in so many different diverse speakers, you get to see it from different avenues and kind of tie things together in, in COVID, right? How, how can, who does that, right? <laughs> <laughs> who does who who are these adaptable leaders, right? So, so I think lead her means exactly that. Um, my husband will probably tell you I am a feminist. He's not sure how we got married and stayed married for this many years. And I say, yeah, you're right, I am. There's nothing wrong with being that, right? You can be married and be in love and have relationships and have children and be a feminist. That's to me, that's a great thing because women. I mean, can, when you empower women and young girls, and now, you know, I have a little four-year-old girl, 
and like seeing her and I'm like, wow, I have to keep doing this. I have to keep doing this because I have to make sure she knows that she can have a voice too, right? And I have nieces and I have nephews and I have all the little young girls in the organizations that I serve. And I think lead her for me means exactly that. Like you have to lead yourself. And if you lead yourself, you can look back and there's some some little feet kind of following behind you, you know? So, <laughs> and it just fits in our military mindset, right? Cause we're always marching, right? So to me, that's what lead her kind of connects in my mind and experiences as. Well said, Major Cook. Well said. <laughs> Absolutely. Lieutenant <laughs> Colonel. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Official, oh. yes. That's my right. apologies. <laughs> I've been private cook too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm Jamie. <laughs> Our marching orders, ladies. And we can see her and see her. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you so much. And so we have a little... Uh, just off the wall question a little bit, sure. but mm -hmm. what is a fun thing you're doing right now during the pandemic that you weren't doing before the pandemic? We're just curious. What is Lieutenant Colonel doing for fun? <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, it sounds very simple, right? But I think learning to take real moments for myself, like, I never really, I never really done that at all. Like, and my husband would beat me up about that so much. He's like, you never take any time for yourself. And when there's a white space on the calendar, you can bet your bottom, I'm going to fill it up with something, right? Um, but the pandemic has been great for me for that, to take a moment. Like, I, I listen to my little podcast that I listen to every morning. Um, and I drink my little ginger tea. Wait, which podcast? Tell us. Yeah, <laughs> well, now podcast? meet her, right? Yes. <laughs> now it's going to be lead her, right? Exactly, right? And so those like moments, I think is what brings me like, even if it's just momentarily, it's just, just a little level of peace and kind of all the chaos and insanity kind of things that's going on. So that that's that's what I've been doing because it's, absolutely against my normal kind of battle rhythm if it makes any sense and it's been pretty cool interesting you know but pretty cool i have to i have to actually do it like force myself to do it so it's been fun <laughs> wait uh jamie i just out of curiosity which podcast i was just so gonna... i if i wasn't in the military i'll be into financial management so uh, I go from Susan Orman <laughs> to <laughs> Dave Ramsey to uh, Chris Hogan to Clark Howard. It's a awesome. combination of them. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Combination. <laughs> Good deal. Yes. That is That's so why I like this podcast. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing a lot of your point of view. It's so inspirational and absolutely. a lot of nuggets, right? You have to be her to no see her to be her and so you're definitely one doing it out there and being an example for all women and those who support him including men everybody who who will insp be inspired to want to achieve more mm -hmm. should they want to go into the military or any any uh, you know absolutely. business yeah, thank absolutely. you so much lieutenant colonel it was an honor <laughs> thank you, thank <laughs> thank you, you. for your service thank you go mm -hmm. army my <laughs> husband went to west point <laughs> but in my brother-in-law <laughs> so go army nights yes. uh, and definitely i mean this was su such a wonderful time spending the time with you Absolutely. so thank you again and thank to you. all our lead hers out there the next mm -hmm. episode coming up here next week is going to be employment strategy and networking leveraging linkedin especially awesome. during the pandemic. So we're looking forward to seeing you all soon. And thank you again, Lieutenant Colonel. Cook. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Have a good evening. Bye -bye. Enjoy. Bye -bye. And I'm joining Bye -bye. next thank week. Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm retired and I need, to, I need that LinkedIn information. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you.